Roll up, roll up. Step right this way, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Canberra Clown Show, the greatest show on earth. And this week, our travelling circus headed to Sydney's western suburbs for a knockout comedy performance by everybody's favourite pair of climate clowns, Al Bozo and his sidekick, Bobo Bowen, in their favourite clown car, the EV. Hey everyone, it's a great day in Eastern Creek today. We've got 60 new electric trucks for Team Global Express. Charged by these Australian-made chargers, solar panels on the roof, batteries. It's great for emissions. It's great for drivers. It's cheaper for the company. It's better for our environment. It's a good day for Western Sydney, a good day for Team Global Express, and a good day for Australia. <sighs> Just not a great day, in my opinion, for people who want their parcels delivered, not in clown cars, but with the efficiency and reliability traditionally provided by the good old-fashioned petrol engine. Apparently, some of Bobo Bowen's EV trucks only go about 100k before needing to be recharged for 90 minutes, and even less if it's a hot or cold day and the heating or the air conditioning is on. But why have one clown in your car when you can make it a double act? This is a great day. This is a game changer. One third of the heavy vehicles operating out of this very big facility in Western Sydney will be all electric. Uh, this transformation is a great example of my government working with the private sector, with the business community to assist the economy, to assist them, but also to assist our objective of heading towards net zero. <laughs> Glad you kept repeating that word, assist, Albozo. Yes, we the taxpayers have certainly assisted your performance by giving, wait for it, drum roll, over $20 million of taxpayers' money to assist the purchase of these clown cars. Sorry, my mistake, these trucks. 60 trucks, that's around $335,000 we have paid to assist each and every one of these trucks. No wonder Christine Holgate, yes, that's her on, on the far right there, the former posty chick who got shafted by ScoMo and now has a new gig. No wonder Christine was jumping for joy, $335,000 per truck, you little beauty. But hey, What's a lazy 20 million bucks when, as the Daily Telegraph reports, there are claims Energy Minister Chris Bowen has lowballed the cost of transitioning the country's power grid to net zero by as much as $100 billion. What's that to a Labour poly? That's $100 billion of your money extra that's going to be splurged in this net zero comedy show. Of course, at the same time as wasting all our money on hopelessly inefficient renewables, Bobo Bowen has been out there disparaging the one energy source with zero emissions that we actually do have a potential abundant supply of. Here he was on Q&A last year trashing nuclear. I can't think of a worse fit for Australia than nuclear energy. It's extraordinarily expensive. We don't have a nuclear industry in Australia, so we'd be starting from scratch. What a joker. Until recently, we didn't have a renewables industry either. We started that from scratch. We don't have a green hydrogen industry either. We're supposedly starting that from scratch. Everything this bozo is doing is starting from scratch. Even the kids spotted that sleight of hand. The cost of nuclear is clearly highly contentious. And you know what the best way to find out the cost of nuclear energy is? It's to lift the nuclear energy ban because yeah, at yeah. that point... Yes, because yes. at that point, you can actually see nuclear reactors, what they will cost, because at this stage, no company is able to propose for nuclear reactors to be built in this country. Yeah, that was 17-year-old Will Shackle, who was on here on Outsiders, winning over the tough Q&A crowd and stealing the show from Bobo with a dose of common sense. But Will's not alone. Over at the Centre for Independent Studies, the talented Miss Zoe Hilton ripped into Bobo Bowen's shocky pee-and-thimble clown act and tore it apart. Energy Minister Chris Bowen loves going on and on about how expensive nuclear energy is and how cheap renewables are. And the media loves repeating this message. 
It's extraordinarily expensive. But where did Minister Bowen get this from? It all comes from the CSIRO's annual GenCost report. The CSIRO decided to exclude large-scale nuclear from their analysis and only include small modular reactors, or SMRs. Now this might seem a bit odd, given that large-scale nuclear is a proven technology used in more than 30 countries worldwide, while SMR technology is still under development. In fact, the CSIRO based their SMR cost estimate on a single cancelled project and erroneously included financing costs which they did not include for any other technology. Well spotted Zoe, great work. So which clowns decided not to include the most basic nuclear energy of them all in their Australian energy costing report? Hmm, our chief scientific body no less. Here's Paul Graham, chief energy clown, sorry, typo, chief energy economist at the CSIRO, which is itself an almost perfect anagram for circus, explaining why <laughs> large-scale nuclear energy, which is relied on and used in over 30 countries, as Zoe said, around the world, was not included in the CSIRO's energy costings report. What a farce. Roll up, roll up to the CSIRO circus. So we had... Um some face-to-face -face workshops in 2018 uh, with uh, industry groups and there weren't any nuclear um, experts at those workshops because it just wasn't, I don't think it was just on their radar at the time. Large-scale nuclear isn't the right size for Australia. The CSIRO's decision to exclude large-scale nuclear was based on a workshop they ran six years ago in which no nuclear experts were present. Because why consult an actual expert when you can rely on the opinions of renewables, coal and gas investors? Remember, we taxpayers fund the CSIRO circus to the tune of billions of dollars. As Zoe points out, they hardly fill one with confidence. In order to maybe do a large-scale nuclear, there's a few things we'll have to work through. This question of whether it is appropriate size for Australia. And then if you thought it was, how would you come up with an Australianized number? Uh, a couple of things that we'd have to think through. So we'll do some more, th more thinking on that. Uh -huh. Heaven help us. As Tony <laughs> Abbott tweeted in response to Zoe's excellent video, quote, the recent emission of large scale nuclear from the CSIRO's energy costings report not only undermines our nation's ability to affordably reduce our emissions, but further justifies the public's declining trust in government institutions. Well said, Tony. You can, of course, find Zoe's full video on the Centre for Independent Studies website. Just go to cis.org.au and why not sign up for membership while you're there? They do an amazing job at the CIS. Oh, and did I forget to mention, at the same time as Bobo and Al Bozo are running around spending squillions on batteries and electric vehicles and solar panels and all that schmozzles, yep, these are the clowns determining the energy future, the prosperity and the standard of living of this country, I say, sacked a lot of them. Oh, and by the way, if the clowns at the CSIRO had bothered to do any research, they would have discovered, as the excellent Joanna Nova points out on her Joe Nova blog, the French built a large-scale nuclear reactor in just seven years way back in 1976. Meanwhile, even the ABC admits that Bowen's baby's lithium-ion batteries caused more than 1,000 fires in Australia alone in the last year. And this week, a massive fire was caused at a car salvage yard in Essex with eight vehicles destroyed and the culprit believed to be an EV. What would Deep Purple have to say about that?